uh, reminded this morning of just how sleepless of a night I always have before I'm going to preach. And I woke this morning and it was this beautiful silence at 6 a.m. in Sayreville. And off in the distance in this Catholic church, they have a church bell. And I heard these church bells ringing. I mean, it wasn't very loud, but I was astonished that I could hear them. And it was such a peaceful feeling. And it kind of gave me a little, uh, a little courage this morning, hearing those bells uh, go off. So, here goes. <laughs> so they say that the more things change, the more they stay the same. For the people of the nation of Judah in 424 B.C., and also for you and me here today. You see, Judah returned from captivity in a foreign land called Babylon because God allowed it. After becoming a corrupt, stiff-necked group, God turned his back on them and allowed them to be carted off far from their homes and their lives. This God who had carried them from the very beginnings in the, in the early days of the father of Abraham. This God who carried them from Egyptian slavery, who provided for them and set them into a land of their own. This God who walked with them under both good kings and walked with them as things went from bad to worse. And now this nation was allowed to return to Jerusalem, 50,000 strong. And they promised to remember. They rebuilt the temple. They pledged with their sacrifices. And once again, they gave their hearts to their God. But it only took 100 years. One century for these so-called people of God to forget. The religious routine faded with boredom. The sacred rituals rituals lost its luster. And again, they returned to a selfish, hard-hearted nature. And they returned to corruption and to violence and to chaos. Does this sound familiar? So this God... He spoke once again using his time-trusted method, his words. And he spoke through trusted men, his prophets. Enter Malachi, the prophet who pokes the people. He prods them to revive their faith in God, to reveal to them the faithfulness of the God that they have, Malachi rebukes them for their contempt. He declares God's justice and his mercy on them to no avail. So Malachi asks once again for true repentance for this people. As a last plea, Malachi cries out, Put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the window of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more. These words stirred in the hearts of some who heard them so that they were not all indifferent. These were the faithful remnant who feared the Lord and feared the talk of judgment from God. Their fear increased as the prophet's word grew louder and harder, and the hearts of these people uh, were changed by what they heard from God. And they lamented in their hearts, and their voices crying out in words similar to what we can read in, in Psalm 88, verses 4 and 5, and the verses sound like this. I am counted among the dead who go down to the pit, I am a man who has no strength, like one set among the dead, 
like the slain that lie in the grave, like those you remember no more. To this psalmist you see, like the remnant, true fear is to be remembered no more by God. To have it be that God is completely given up. Finally, he's turned his back forever, thrown in the proverbial towel, and in so doing pronounces doom for all who are living. And it creates such fear in these few faithful that they plead endlessly with God out of fear that God would remember his steadfast love for his creation no more. As if human life never existed and God exits once and for all this earth out of frustration. But this is not the message of Malachi, thankfully. For this is not our God. You see, God remembers and he can never forget. His remembering includes our fallenness and all of our sins. And his word, words change from judgment to hope that we have in our grace that he provides. So we hear in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, these words. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I wake up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. For behold, the day is coming for all who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The promise of grace, the promise of a savior, the promise to remember only as a God can remember. Think about it. How simple it is to remember. Yet it requires much devotion. And this remembering can bring such peace and joy to people, to remember a birthday or perhaps an anniversary. How loudly this remembrance speaks into the lives of others. To remember means that we aren't so self-centered and self-absorbed. To remember means we acknowledge others and that we really are listening and paying attention. It shows we care that our hearts are open this expression of true remembrance turns up in the most unusual place, though. You see, 400 years after Malachi speaks, 400 years after God goes silent, God's qualities of remembrance find themselves in a manger in Bethlehem, in a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, in a lowly stable, Surrounded by animals. For God now remembers as a human. And he is to experience our being. And so Jesus in our gospel today heads up a hill. Near the Sea of Galilee to get away from the crowds that are growing and, and calling to him and asking him to help them. And with his closest disciples in tow, he sits down. Now, the one that the prophet Malachi spoke of will open his mouth and begin to speak of humanity and to speak of God as a God who remembers. And in eight statements, in eight simple words, he reveals the simplest realities of our lives. To reveal the heart of a creator for his creatures. And therein it is a diagnosis and a remedy for that sickness, a cure for our ills, a gift to us in the Beatitudes God remembers. And so it goes, he remembers the poor in spirit, the destitute state we can find ourselves in and often do. 
when we are at our wit's end. And he remembers us as we mourn, the brokenhearted, the hurting, and the grieving, and the suffering that we experience in all of our lives. And now he is in it with us. And Jesus then turns to the reality of the meek in this life, for this is his nature too. Those who somehow are selfless, who see others and put themselves, for, put them, themselves before or after others. Those who remember, like God, what it means to be human. And God remembers those who are hungry and thirsty, that they thirst for righteousness, and that these feel in their bones that things just aren't right the way they are. And they hunger and thirst for a time when God will make everything right again. And Jesus, he hungered and thirsted right alongside of us. And then he goes on to talk of the merciful and the peaceful, who remember that God is a God of peace and of mercy. This is the God that we've come to know. And then he exclaims that persecutions will come to all of us who remember our God in this way. Jesus says that there are those who will be enemies of God, who will seek every opportunity to cast evil and oppress those who remember God. And this is the reality, the reality of human life and the life we experience, and the life that God sees. Yet God now experienced it all very well. Did I mention that God remembers? It is this other reality our Lord Jesus Christ reveals to us today. It's the other side of the coin, if you will, how God sees us all as his children. And the way Jesus expresses it, it would be captured, it would have really captured the attention of the disciples as they were listening to him as they sat by the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus used the same word again eight times to frame our human state of affairs in the way that God sees us. He uses the word blessed or blessed. And this is God seeing us as we are in our lives the realities that we live. This is God remembering, who sees us as blessed, who sees us all as his saints. You see, Jesus spoke Aramaic, which is a form of the Hebrew language. And in Aramaic, there are no verbs. So in saying blessed are, you have to realize that there is no word are in Aramaic. So as it turns out, it sounds a little like this. O blessedness of the poor in spirit. Now as it is phrased this way and when it comes out, it's more interpreted not as a future endeavor or a future promise, but as something that has been fulfilled right here, right now. O blessedness of the merciful right here, right now. For they will receive mercy right here, right now. Not some future time, but as Jesus states, it's an exclamation of excitement that Jesus was feeling for them. And they could feel that excitement as well. For what we experience is in the eyes of God is now. It's beneficial to you and to me because we have a God who remembers. And in, in this exclamation, we can see what a, tra a saint truly is. He is one who is remembered by our God, and he is never forgotten, for his name is written in the book of remembrance. The gospel is God remembering you and me in the person of Jesus Christ, for God calls you blessed. So behold, says the prophet Malachi, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord, that day has come. 
He was made manifest as a way for our salvation in this life through his life, through his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the Word made flesh. And in him, God remembers. Jesus is the way that we are blessed. And he is the very one who can make us all saints. You know, it's, it's kind of ignorant. It's an ignorance beyond comparison, if you will, to then go about human life and ignore this God who has opened himself to us in such a way that he gave his son to us for our human failings. A God who felt what we feel and a God who lives or lived as we live. This is given to us as a gift, unearnable. Yet here we are in, year, in the year 2020, and we go about our business as the nation of Israel did over two or three millennia, millennia ago, forgetting their God who carries them. And so in our society today, we turn every which way but to the God who remembers. The more things change, the more they stay the same. But not for the rem uh, remnant, the saints in this world. You see, we choose to remember. By the grace of God, we are his saints. Here we go. I just wanted to show you this painting. It, came, it was drawn to my attention this week as I was studying um, for my seminary class. And it's a painting by a young man named Stephen Hawley. And it's called The Root of Jesse. And in the painting, you can, you can kind of see the crucifix off in the distance there. You know, he, he kind of states his reason for painting this picture is not a, so much as a devotional for himself, but just as a way for him um, to work through his personal questions about Christianity. So in this painting of his, we, we can kind of clearly see this crucifix before us. You know, you, you got the image there. Of, it's almost as if you're sitting at a table. And you have the fruit in front of you and this black lacquer table. Off in the distance is this painting of the crucifix. And you, you really can't make out the face of, of God, but you know that it's God there on the cross. And above his name, you may above his head, you may not be able to make it out, but if you if you can, you vaguely can see the the I-N-R-I, -I, the Inri that is placed above him, which is, um, you know, something that was placed above the cross. And it states the fact that this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And this was a historical fact. But it struck me as I looked at this pa painting for a while as, you know, if you're an art lover, you kind of draw your conclusions from, from certain paintings that you see. But it struck me as, here we are sitting at the table looking up, and I see this image of Christ on the cross. And I also see the masking tape on the, around the edges holding it up. And to me, it, it kind of looks as if um, maybe God is, you know, someone has tried to take, and da take down this painting or this this image before our eyes a number of times, and yet there are those who have tried and won and returned to putting it back up with the masking tape. And we see the blood flowing from the side of Jesus, and it almost looks as if it's pouring itself into that cup that's there on the table. But somehow we keep that image before our eyes. Somehow we choose to remember. And, and so 
That's the remnant that we choose to remember. And those are the ones that God remembers. And those are the ones who are his saints, the living and the dead. You know, we fight all of us to remember. This image before us is just an example of how it's been torn down and how we battle and re-erect it and put it back up so that we have it before our eyes. And hopefully we can remain and keep it up so that those who come after us may see it as an image before their eyes as they remember, as they live their lives. And so we continue to place it before our eyes and we know that this is the, God, the way God would have us remember that he would not turn away for he will not rem- forget that, but that he would remember us always. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, you are saints. Thank God today for the cross for it is in it we remember and he remembers us. Thank God for the Sabbath day where we can come and remember Sunday after Sunday, where we can celebrate. You know, I heard it said that we kind of sit in our lives in Holy, Tuesday, uh, Holy Saturday. And, and to our left, we, we look and we see Good Friday. And we see the cross. And we fear. And we tremble. Because In it, we see the realities of our lives, the realities of humanity. But we also turn to Sunday morning to our right, and we thank God for Sundays. For on Sunday morning, we see an empty tomb, a tomb in which which we know they laid him. And we rejoice on Sunday morning, and we celebrate. For he is risen, and in his risenness, risenness, God remembers us and calls us all blessed and sees us all as his saints. May we never forget what our God in his mercy has done and is doing for all of his saints. Amen.